Welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church. We hope that you will feel the presence of God in this holy space. Excuse me, I'm tangled. We believe that you will also find God in the community of people who worship here. Trinity is rich in the traditions of the Episcopal Church, and it is our prayer that you will feel warmly welcomed. May this place be to you a source of strength and spiritual renewal. May you also find it a place where all people are accepted. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, Trinity welcomes you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord is risen Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We'll continue with a portion of Psalm 98, which we will recite responsively by whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness the house of Israel. All the nations of the earth will sing the victories of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the king 
the Lord. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, 
so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Two weeks ago, I shared a look at the way they act, live, breathe, and possibly drown in running water. One might surmise a sermon that Mother Cheryl was feeling, she might have been feeling a little sheepish. No, really, really. One might also surmise that she preached that subject simply because she was bad. I know, right? Last week, last week, Father Chris gave us a stark reminder that love, love is active. We do what we do. We love as we love because God loved us first. When we are young, we a list of do's and do nots. Do not cross the street without looking both ways. Do show respect for your elders. Do not. Do not misbehave. Do treat people the way you would like to be treated. Lending a help in, clearing, in cleaning up dishes after a meal? The list seems endless. Some grade school children learn the list well and follow them, follow all the rules. And some of these might even become a little self-righteous with the way they follow the rules in the midst of many others who do not. There is a comfort that can come from following the rules. Do what is expected, keeping the list. But there also comes a time when we grow out of childhood, internalize the purpose of the rules, and live as adults. Even the Old Testament has a list which we today refer as to the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother. Do not covet another's belongings. Here again, learning the list and following it is rather easy and straightforward. It is literally a challenge as to how to be good and honorable in God's sight. And too often, too often we encounter or have become ourselves those who become a bit smug in the way they keep the rules and follow the list. Much like a proud grade school children who find comfort and validation in mere obedience. But Jesus, Jesus gives us a command in today's gospel that supersedes all others. It is simply this, love one another. Of course, with a command and an invitation like this, it can be seductive to return to the checklist how much easier it would be to maintain a checklist such as going to church, celebrating the sacraments, fasting on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But the command issued by Jesus is much, is much more difficult. A command to love knows no bounds, no checklist. It can be much easier to simply attend church once a week and other high feast days in the church liturgical year than it can be to love. So by this command, Jesus invites us to an adult spirituality, no longer satisfied by keeping a list. We are children who need to be told to help with cleaning up after dinner. We do this naturally out of love. We do do much more. There is no box to check for love. Love does not count the cost of might be. Always, 
always do more personal relationship with one another. That is not transactional, but self-giving. As Jesus says in the gospel, his love for his friends reaches the point of laying down his life for them. <clears throat> there is no boundary to what love calls us to do. And for that reason, we might prefer a list of do's and do nots. But that's not what we receive from Jesus. We receive from Christ a command to simple, it's simple but demanding, inviting love Love one another. The Christian life modeled by Jesus is about freedom to love to the point of laying down one's life for another. A relationship with Jesus necessarily involves a relationship with Jesus' friends. And these friends are called to love not only Jesus and God, not only, perhaps more importantly, one another. How much simpler the spiritual life would be if we only had to focus on loving Jesus and loving God. But to be friends of Jesus means that we love Christ's other friends as well. This kind of love is not simply a checklist of good deeds, but a dying to self that puts others. This love is self sacrificial and demanding that it invites us to weed, we put down our own wants, our own needs, our own desires, aside to serve and love. Might respond, others have so many needs that there's no way, no way we could meet them all. We could die trying. Precisely is the answer we might expect. The Christian life is one that invites us to a kind of heroism of daily sacrifice and dying and daily sacrifice for this my sisters my brothers my siblings in Christ is the paschal mystery given to us by Jesus for when we give ourselves to the point of return God is there to raise us Continuing last Sunday's theme of vine and branches, Jesus speaks of the love of God that it will be a bonding agent of the new Israel. The model of love for the faithful disciple is love one another as I have loved you. is extreme, limitless, unconditional. The love manifested in the gospel and the risen resurrection of Christ creates an entirely new relationship between God and humanity. Again, again, Christ, the example of servanthood, the Redeemer, is the great connector between God and us. In Christ, we are not slaves of a distant divine creator, but yes, friends of a loving God who hears the prayers and cries made to God as friends of God, we are called to reflect that love to the rest of the world. Loving one another as Christ loved us begins to put aside our hopes and wants and seeks and seeks the hopes and wants of others, caring for and about others with selflessness and understanding regardless, regardless of the sacrifice. Always ready to make the first move to forgive and heal. That kind of love can be so overwhelmingly demanding that we may actually shy away from it, the prospect. But most of us have known some time, hopefully in our lives, when we have been able to love like that or when someone else has loved us like that. It is an incredible joy we experience the profound sense and purpose of wholeness and giving and receiving of that kind of love, the depth of love and has had for us all. Christ transforms creation's relationship with its creator. God is not some distant, aloof, removed architect of the universe. God is not the cruel taskmaster. 
God is not an unfeeling who seeks the destruction of the wicked. love. And Jesus is the perfect expression of that love. All that God has done in the first creation of Genesis and in the recreation of Easter has been done out of limitless, unfathomable love. Such love moves us from demand and invites us to not to fear God, but to accept God's loving offer of friendship for our unworthiness. But, but, we do this for grateful joy at what God has done for us first. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre approaches, let us pray for all who suffered during and after the event for increased recognition and understanding of the racism and injustice that continue to hurt human beings, and for the church to clearly exemplify God's love and impartiality. We pray for the estimated 300 women men and children whose lives ended tragically in terror and violence, that their souls may continue to enjoy eternal peace and love in the presence of God and the community of saints. We pray for the Greenwood residents who survived the massacre and others who were directly affected Recognizing their immense pain from losing loved ones, the uncertainty they faced after losing their homes and livelihoods, and for the words, actions, and effects of racism and segregation they continued to endure long after the massacre. We pray for Tulsa Race Massacre Commission members and for all who seek truth and justice in this and other events of racial violence around our nation and world, that we may learn the facts of what happened and draw lessons that will make our communities stronger and more respectful. We pray for every person, family, and community of color that continues to face and suffer from the effects of systemic 
institutional, and cultural racism that are historically and often subconsciously entwined in many aspects of our society. We pray, Lord, that we as individuals search inwardly and resolve to remove any biases that we may have against any race or ethnicity that keeps us from loving every person as ourselves, as Jesus instructed his followers. We pray and ask for your guidance, Lord, to help us live by our baptismal vow to strive for justice and peace among all people and to respect the dignity of every human being. And we at Trinity, as part of the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement, pray, Lord, that you guide our church and diocese now and going forward, that we may shine the light of Christ in becoming a beloved community throughout our state, so that all may know and feel the impartial love and grace that you have for all humankind. Have compassion on Barbara Sue, Odell, Nancy, Paulette, Alicia, Jeremy, Marjorie, Teresa, Shirley, Marie, Taylor, Cameron, Kanetha, Finley, David, Charles, Zip, Martha, P.A., J, Mark, Katie, Barbara, Brandy, Mateo, Jonathan, Martha, the Reese family, Nancy McCormick Young, all medical and cleaning personnel, and the New Hope staff and families, that they may be delivered from their distress, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed, including Dana Boswell Strong, eternal rest. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, again, welcome to Trinity Church. Our virtual coffee hour begins at 11.15 on Facebook today. I lied, on Zoom today. The link is on our Facebook page. Our pledge campaign is ongoing. Uh, Christian formation classes are happening, and you still have time to register if you'd like. We have classes with the Gospel of Luke on Sunday night. We have Deacon Deborah doing um, the presiding bishop's sermons on Monday night. On Tuesday night is Father Chris talking about end of life or in later part of life issues. And on Wednesday nights is our, our newcomers class at Trinity. Tuesdays at Trinity this week is Lise Glazer. She's an oboist at 12.05 this Tuesday. We'll be reopening again on May 23rd. Pentecost Sunday, I expect some fun things to be happening on that day. Vacation Bible School, VBS, is on July 19th through the 23rd, and the, the theme is Seuss on the Loose. All the information, again, is on our Facebook page and on our web page. Look in there, and you can find out whatever you need to know. EFM continues. We're always looking for people to re-enroll in the program. Uh, Wednesday Meditation continues, Trinity Connect and Compline are every Monday through Saturday on Facebook. Our food drive is ongoing. 
uh, beans, corn, rice are the issues, the things that we need. And New Hope, traditionally New Hope is uh, held here on Mother's Day, um, and it's been known as New Hope Sunday. Um, they've usually been at the church to speak to us about the New Hope program. If you go to our website, you'll find uh, a direction or pointing to the Amazon website for them for their wish list of things that they need for the kids to go to camp. If you're not familiar with New Hope, it's a program that works with youth whose parents, either one or both, are incarcerated. Uh, New Hope provides for them mentorship, provides after-school programming, and provides the opportunity for these children to go to camp. Trinity is also selling t-shirts. Uh, we have ones that are rainbow colored. No, that are the, sev the six different colors of the rainbow um, that say you are loved, Trinity, and we'll use, be using those for the pride parade. And we also have hoodies that are in heather tones, um, and the proceeds for both of those will be going to youth programming. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. This Holy Communion will be offered today in honor and memory of all mothers. Happy Mother's Day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you, for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us. 
and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in your, the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have redeemed us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in joy, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood in the new covenant. Unite us to, unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us God's children through the resurrection of God's Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage into sin, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.